Let us pray as we share a word from the Lord. Mighty God, we bless you and we give you thanks that your word never returns to you void, but accomplishes in every time and season your perfect will for our lives. And so God, speak a word that will meet us at our points of need, a word that will speak to this experience of coming back home and also this experience of motherhood and the celebration of our women and those who have mothered us. So let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen and amen. Friends, I believe that it is important that we know our story. And there are many persons who go through life and do not know their story. It's very important that we remember our history, our heritage, and who we are. If we don't know who we are, the history of our people, of our nation, of our faith, of our family, then we are liable to believe anything that we are fed and to be manipulated by the forces in the world around us that are trying to promote their various ideological agendas. And for many years, many centuries, we have been fed stories about ourselves that have come from a particular lens that is not necessarily our lens. And so it is important that we tell our own story from our own perspective and through our own lenses. On the land and in the air in West Africa, according to Akan mythology, there walks and flies a mythical bird called Sankofa. Though this bird is not real, its legendary symbolic meaning carries a rallying cry for the peoples of the world in general and all people of African descent in particular. The official philosophical interpretation of the name Sankofa is understood by the drawing and paintings used to represent this mythical bird. In these artistic sketches, the bird is flying forward with its neck and head turned backward. This symbolic representation represents a deep appreciation and respect for one's history, ancestors, and so forth. The Sankofa bird serves as a reminder to look both back and forward, embracing the past while looking ahead to the future. This provides us with a deeper insight into our story, into our history, with the opportunity to examine our own indifferences. According to Carter Woodson Center, San means to return, Ko means to go, and Fa means to fetch or to seek. While the entire word is translated, it means as go back and get it or go back and take it, and I may add, and bring it into the present and into the future. This message prompts us to dive into our collective history, not just to honor the struggles and triumphs of the past, but to draw inspiration for positive change in the present and in the future. 
this concept of um, Sankofa is picked up in biblical literature as uh, another term that is used by the Jews, anamnesis, which has the same meaning and impact on life. This word anamnesis is used by the Jews in the celebration of Passover. The Passover which represented their freedom from slavery. And every year they would celebrate this festival. They will gather around campfires in families. And as they are preparing the meat, which is a part of the meal, the youngest member of the family will ask, why are we doing this? What is the meaning of this? And the patriarch or the matriarch will get up and will say to the family gathered, when we were in Egypt, when we were slaves in Egypt, when we were controlled by the Pharaoh, our ancestors cried out to God, and God heard their cries, and God sent Moses, a deliverer. God sent Moses to wrestle with the Pharaoh and to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. After many trials and temptations and tribulations, Pharaoh could not start withstand the mighty power of God. And Pharaoh let us go. And now we are in this place of freedom. It is interesting to note that many years removed from the actual event, the persons who were gathered around campfires celebrating Passover had never stepped a foot into Egypt. They were never physically into Egypt. And so this word, anamnesis, from which we get the word remember, is an interesting word. This word, anamnesis, to remember, I have said to this church before, is not the opposite of forget. This word, anamnesis, the opposite of it is to dismember. To dismember, to remove from collective presence, to, to remove from membership. So what happens in this anamnesis? is that the people of Israel journeyed emotionally and mentally back to where their ancestors were slaves. They examined their conditions. They examined their realities. And they owned it. They owned it for themselves. And they brought that reality back with them into the present so that when they gathered around campfires, it as far as they were concerned, they were in Egypt because their seeds of their ancestors who were in Egypt. And so they owned the experience, all of it, the good and the bad, the difficult and the easy, and they bring all of those experiences bundled up as a part of their own experience, their own journey, and they owned it for themselves. Anamnesis, the Passover, biblical remembrance is more than just recalling events of the past, like a student studying for an exam. It carries the force of reliving the past in the present, of being caught up in the events as if we were there not in a way that causes us to retreat into nostalgia or struck in the past or stuck in the past, but to experience again the story of the past, 
which informs our story in the present and enables us to carry that story into the future. And most importantly, to experience again the faithfulness of a covenant God, a God of history, a God who is above time and beyond time and space, a God who was with our ancestors, and that same God is the God who is with us. And so we gather in this space today to remember to remember the stories of our ancestors. You have journeyed to Barbados to remember, to enter again into the space and the experiences and to hear again the story. And that story is not just the story of your ancestors who left here 159 years ago, but that story is now your story. It's now the story of your children and your children's children and their children and will be the story of your family name for all eternity. Remember allows us to discover our roots, to recognize that we have deep, deep connections, to recognize that we have deep, deep roots, because the truth is that very often we do not feel and sense this deep connection and this deep root because that was one of the impacts of colonialism. Colonialism is about uprooting. It is about cutting off. It is about dividing and separating. And so many persons of African descent do not feel that deep sense of being rooted, that deep rootedness. As a matter of fact, I've come to realize that many persons in our society are only familiar with the previous generation, if so far. There are many children who only know their parents. And in few instances, they know their parents' parents. And apart from that, they know nothing else. If you look at the book of Daniel, you'll see how empire behaves in relation to slavery. And you know the story. We call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But those are the names that were given to them by the Babylonians. Their names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But what the empire did was to give them new names, to give them new food, to re-educate them, and to give them a new religion. It was Hananiah, Mishael, and Asahariah who resisted. It was these three young men, along with Daniel, who resisted the empire, who refused to forget where they have come from, who refused to forget the foods of their ancestors, who refused to forget the dress of their ancestors, who refused to forget the meaning of their names, who refused to forget their religion and the God who has kept them in the difficult times. And so this idea of not being deeply rooted is a matter that as people of faith we need to respond to. One of our great Caribbean theologians, Ashley Smith, wrote a book entitled Deep Roots and Potted Plants. And he makes the point that Christianity in the Caribbean has never really taken root, but remains in a potted plant which has managed to survive in the little containers in which it was brought from the nurseries in Europe. 
I want to submit to you that this is not just the reality of Christianity. This is the reality of our Caribbean civilization and that of African descent. The pot prevents deep-rootedness. The pot ensures that the, de that the roots do not go deep. And so you can simply be moved from place to place without causing much disruption. And I wonder, I wonder if when our ancestors left Barbados 159 years ago, that one of the things that drove them is this realization that what colonialism has done is to place them in pots and they recognized that pots could not hold them, that it was time for their roots to grow deep, that it was time for their roots to spread and expand so that generations after, their descendants can trace their lineage and come to a greater appreciation of who they are and whose they are. So it means on this Mother's Day, I think it's a good time for us to talk about this because the truth is, mothers, that many of your children do not know who they really are because you have not helped them to understand themselves beyond you. Whenever I do premarital counseling, one of the first places that I start is with this whole question of who are you, which is a loaded question. This question of who are you? And as people begin to wrestle with that question, it then leads us to develop the family tree. But the goal is not simply to develop a family tree that goes back as far as possible. Because what we do then is to turn this family tree into a genogram. A genogram now, more than a family tree, begins to plot patterns. Begins to help you to see how the person that you are is deeply connected with all the people that you're related to as far back as possible. And you begin to notice some patterns. You begin to realize that certain ways that you behave and certain things that you do and in certain ways that you think that there was a great, great grandmother who behaved this way and then there was a great, great auntie and then there was an auntie and then there was a sister and you notice that um, your son or, or your daughter and you realize that there are patterns that run through the generations. When you notice those patterns, there are two things that this allow you, allows you to do. First of all, to celebrate and perpetuate. To celebrate and perpetuate. That is why the Jews gathered every year to celebrate for seven days after the festival of unleavened bread to celebrate their deliverance from Egypt and into the wilderness. When we are able to trace our roots to discover who we are and the people that we are related to, and we begin to notice the patterns that have come through the generations. There are some patterns that we want to lift up. There are some patterns that we want to celebrate. There are some patterns we want to perpetuate. There are some patterns that we want to make sure the next generation and the next generation so that there will never be a generation of my family who do not know and can appreciate these traits, these values, these accomplishments, these teachings, these things that have characterized this family, these things that have made this family it is. And so it is only when we know that we can celebrate and perpetuate. 
in a deliberate way, recognizing that those things that are good will always be a threat to others. And it is when we don't know that the enemy can use those very things to cut us off and to isolate us from who we are. And so we celebrate and we perpetuate. The other thing that we can do is to repent and break the unhealthy patterns. Because the truth is that while we are always going to find things to celebrate and perpetuate, we are also going to find things that we do not want the next generation to emulate. We are also going to find things that we do not want to be passed on to the next generation. We are also going to see things that we want uh, in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Christ to cut off uh, so that generational curses uh, are not passed on to the second and third and fourth generation. So yes, we celebrate the good, uh, but we also repent uh, and break from the unhealthy patterns. And one of the things that pains me in our Caribbean society, because we are so disconnected from our past, we have become so Europeanized and Americanized, and we do not know our deep, deep roots. We are not able to celebrate the good that we are and the good that have come across the Atlantic and the good that are deeply rooted in us. But there are others who are always ready to fan the things that destroy and to empower and enable the things that we should really be breaking. Again, that comes out of this knowledge of who we are. And so it is important that we rediscover ourselves to rediscover where we have come from because in so doing we are properly positioned to create wonderful societies families and faith communities this for us is heritage month as Methodists and we deliberately and intentionally every year retell the story of our history. That when Methodism came to this country and to this region, it came as an agent, as a movement that stood against oppression and slavery and was deeply involved in the liberation movement. And out of that Methodist DNA, that Methodist ethos, rose up a woman called Sarah Angel, who stood against the powers of evil, who stood against a system of oppression, who even though she was threatened, even though she was persecuted and prosecuted, she stood up in the face of evil. She championed the cause of the oppressed people. And out of Sarah Angel has come the only religious hero of Barbados. Her grave is at the back of this church. And that reminds us of who we are and our DNA and the need for us to stand against every form of evil and oppression. 
It reminds us that our cause and our purpose is not simply to build large cathedrals and gather people, but to transform a nation, to transform a society, to ensure that our children and our children's children can stand tall and make their own contribution to the further development of our region. And so, my friends, let me close, and this is probably going to be my shortest sermon this year, <laughs> by saying that this is time for us to check ourselves. By unearthing our African traditional leadership values and counter corruption and immoral leadership, this is time for us to check ourselves to reconnect with our roots, to understand our story, to tell our story so that our children and our children's children and their children will know who they are and whose they are so that they will not be easily manipulated by every wind of doctrine so that they will not be easily influenced by the empire and by the forces of this world that want to control the narrative so that they will ensure that they are always on top of the story and that they can always tell the story. Some time ago, I was speaking with a friend of mine from Ghana, and we were talking about our primary school days. And he said to me that he went to one of these schools that was built by the missionaries, the European missionaries. And he said that they were told, they were taught that people in the Caribbean lived in huts and swung in trees. And that the kind of life that we lived but I said, that's interesting because that's the same thing they told us <laughs> about you. That's the same thing they told us about you. That's because we were not telling our own story, or rather our own stories were not being heard. And God is doing something. God is doing something beautiful where the stories that we were told about ourselves are being revamped and corrected, and we need to ensure that this process continues. And I know that this is something that Ambassador Kamishang is excited about and has been doing himself. But more of us need to begin to tell our story. Brothers, and I call you brothers, sisters, and I call you sisters. May God, who is our God, give us the grace to continue to trace our deep, deep roots so that these trees that are growing up will not be surface roots that can be blown down easily, but roots that are so entangled with each other, intertwined with each other, that you cannot blow one down unless you blow all down because the roots are all connected. Not potted plants, but deeply rooted trees. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.